what is the elements of reinforced concrete design and then kenapa dia tak nak Okay, and then kita belajar juga the elements eh. Uh, what consists in reinforced concrete structure, the aggregate, the cement and the concrete properties. So, we have five concrete properties yang kita dah tahu. Okay. Um, okay, however, I still have not yet touched on the reinforcement. Okay, so <coughs> I can start with this lah. Okay. Um, before this is the we end at concrete properties so right now we start with re reinforcement so reinforcing bars are produced in two grades okay so satu is mild steel i hope you nampak i conteng eh ayah uh, kenapa tak ada why i cannot draw This is annoying. <clears throat> oh man. <sighs> oh, sabar kejap. Saya tengah betulkan benda ni. They are being very funny with me right now. One is mild steel. Yeah. Okay, and another one is high yield steel. Okay, so for mild steel, um, terms that you have to know lah. This is the symbol for concrete. Sorry, for steel strength. Okay, so symbol for steel strength. Can I put it on a draw? Kejap you. I having a problem sekarang ni. Kejap eh. Dia tak nak draw. Why dia tak nak draw? Stop sharing. <clears throat> this thing refused to draw I have no idea <laughs> Every week. <clears throat> So, I believe dah boleh dah kot. Share. Okay. 
Okay, sambung balik. Sorry. Ada gangguan sikit. Okay. Um, okay, sambung eh. <laughs> Habis ink. Hmm, memang. Alright, uh, so first is Miles Steelbuck. Serius lah, dia memang bila ni dia... Okay, boleh. Miles Steel Bar and the other one is High Yield Steel. For Miles Steel Bar, FY is 250. Okay, FY ni apa? FY ni is actually Steel Strength. This is the symbol. Okay, symbol dia still strength, tak berubah. So, FY, kalau kita dengar perkataan FY, so we know that it's refer to still strength. So, for mild steel, so mana mild steel? Tak dengar, Miss cakap. Okay, uh, for mild steel, mana satu mild steel? So, if you look at here, the one yang... Uh, have a smooth surface like this the one yang I bulatkan ni so this one is jenis-jenis mild steel bar um, I'm not sure I rasa dulu you ada pernah buat kot kerja-kerja uh, concreting you mungkin ada buat pad footing ada ke buat pad footing so pad footing I believe that you use this kind of steel for the field work maksudnya for the lab Okay, tapi sebenarnya in real life for foundation is not suitable sebenarnya pakai di small steel because small steel if you look at here the steel strength is actually lower compared to high yield steel. Okay, high yield steel ataupun kita panggil dia high high tensile steel. Okay, so you can call it high yield steel. You also can also call it high tensile steel. Okay. <coughs> so this kind of bar yang mana satu di ni contohnya lah. Hmm. Contohnya. So the um, the the surface not that as smooth as the mild yield. Mild yield. Ah, mild steel. <laughs> the surface not as smooth as as mild steel. Tapi. Um, Kalau you tengok dia punya surface tu ada macam like corrugated like this eh. So this one is high yield steel. So uh, for the high yield steel, the strength FY is 460. This one you can ingat. Okay, it is fixed. Tak pernah berubah. Mild steel FY 250. High yield steel uh, FY is equal to 460. Okay, so the stress strain curve for reinforcing bar are shown in figure. Hot roll bar are definite yield points. A defined proof stress is recorded for the cold work bar. If you look at in the stress strain curve for reinforcement bar here, uh, you see that the mild steel hot roll steel bar, so uh, you can nampak dia punya stress is up until 250. So this one, I believe that you pernah belajar masa part 2 dengan I juga yang kita ada Belajar pasal stress, strain and modulus of elasticity Chapter 1 eh um, That one dia buat uh, experiment Actually the the theory is about the experiment About uh, you are pulling pulling out um, rod Okay, this graph yang akan dia, dia, dia apa dia, dia buat lah from that kind of experiment um, from this graph also show that the mild steel, the stress for mild steel is lower compared to high yield hot roll bar and also high yield cold works bar. I'm not going to explain on upper hot roll bar, cold work bar. Tapi hot roll bar ni is the one yang um, is commonly used dalam um, project lah. So, um... Kalau cold work bar ni dia macam mahal lagi okay because of it's more expensive and it's not uh, dia macam ada kerja-kerja certain-certain work sahaja yang sesuai untuk cold work bars ni. Dia ada extra lepas okay for example kalau katakan you buat hot roll bar okay uh, in the kilang lah bukan you yang buat lah kilang yang buat eh. Dia produce the hot, hot, hot 
roll bar masa tengah panas tu tapi okay habis dah dia punya proses however for cold work bar dia ada another process yang dia akan proses lagi after the bar cold uh, so kalau hot roll dia akan masa dia tengah panas-panas tu dia akan roll lah okay however masa kalau cold work bar dia akan biarkan sejuk dulu baru dia akan do something that's like a finishes touch lah to the bars um, masa dia dalam keadaan sejuk okay so itu beza dia and this one is more expensive right but in Malaysia normally kita akan pakai hot roll bar okay um, so the young modulus elasticity uh, E200 uh, the behavior intention and compression is taken to be the same masti bar produce as small round bar so this is mild steel bar high yield bar produce as deformed bar so this one lah um into types uh, cold and also uh, hot okay um type one square twisted cold work bar so you nampak kat sini dia sebenarnya bar ni uh, square and then the twist kan so jadilah rupa macam tu but jarang-jarang kita jumpa eh yang pakai macam ni alright so next is the basis of the design so the design of reinforced concrete elements to be as 8110 so everything yang we learn in chapter sorry okay in chapter 1 2 3 4 which is reinforced concrete design eh apa je reinforced concrete design we're going to refer to uh, British Standard 8110. Okay. So, BS ni bukan bullshit. <laughs> it is actually British Standard. Okay. It's based on limit state method. So, what is limit state? So, normally when we design something. um, uh, nak cakap? Eh? Kena ada limit lah. Okay. If we exceed the limit. Uh, whatever that you design can fail for example macam tu eh so same goes with this limit state method untuk basis of design reinforce concrete so okay the criterion for safe design in is the, that the structure should not become unfit for use for example that it should not reach reach a limit state during its design life so uh, if you design something that maybe will last about 50 years so you don't want your building to collapse within that 50 years <laughs> mm, so that that is the reason why lah okay so this is achieved in particular by designing the structure to ensure that it does not reach the ultimate limit state we have two limit state which are ultimate limit state and also serviceability limit state for ultimate limit state, the whole structure or its element should not collapse, overturn or buckle when subjected to design load. Okay. If you look at here, ULS, not collapse. So meaning this is like the critical thing lah. Um, if let's say the ultimate limit state is exceed, maksudnya terlebih daripada limit yang you design, so bangunan you akan collapse, overturn ataupun buckle. Okay. However, for serviceability limit state or SLS, the structure should not become unfit for use due to excessive deflection, cracking or vibration. So if you look at the SLS, this one is much more, how to say, lebih, lebih, um, bukan lebih lenient. The standard is lower lah compared to the ULS. Okay, because as SLS it's about deflection. So, for example, kan dulu kan you are belajar about deflection. So, okay. Excessive means terlebih lah. Okay. Deflection um, will can cause the building to collapse. Okay. But, too much lah maksudnya. Because bila dia dah deflect too much. So, whatever from the load that come from above that you punya beam makan Ketak lah. Okay, so akanlah runtuh. Okay, so this, we don't want this to happen. But for serviceability limit state, um, normally it will not the, cause the building to collapse. But it will only affect the appearance of the building. 
Okay, different from ULS. So, ULS ni lebih critical lah compared to SLS. SLS is more on the aesthetic value, on the appearance value of the uh, building. Okay. So, some of ULS to be considered. We have four here for ULS and three for SLS. Okay, so ULS due to bending, shear, direct compression, tension and overturning. What does it mean by... Okay, so bending, shear, overturning, semua ni. Okay, this is all caused by the loading. Okay, semua ni loading punya kerja lah. Kenapa ada bending, kenapa ada shear, kenapa ada direct compression, kenapa ada overturning. Semua because of loading. So bending, if, let, if let's say it is excessive bending. So you know that deflection is caused by bending sebenarnya kan. Okay, bending lah. So you been bending like this. Okay, so... If let's say this is like exceed, exceed whatever the limit state provided for bending, you punya beam akan uh, pecah. Okay, putus. Yes, and also maybe there's also a shear load, you punya beam also akan pecah lah. Okay, direct compression or tension which is perhaps you punya building can support beberapa kilo newtons but you put it too much then it will collapse also and others lah. So, overturning, uh, for example, macam retaining wall. So, if you still remember, there's a factor of safety when you design for retaining wall. Okay. So, this is the kind of um, factor of safety tu sebenarnya macam okay. Berapa factor of safety yang selamat for overturning? Bila you exceed the factor of safety, so meaning you punya uh, retaining wall akan overturn. Something like that. Okay, so sama je dia punya concept here lah. Okay, uh, some of the SLS to be considered are we have deflection, cracking and vibration. So, you see here this is more on the appearance wise lah. Okay, excessive does not mean ay, it's going to collapse but it will affect on the aesthetic value of the uh, structure. Uh, penatnya. When designing a particular concrete element, it is usual to first ensure that the ULS is not exceeded then check the Relevant SLS is, are also satisfied. So, it's ULS is the most important one because we don't want the building to collapse. So, having identified the relevant limit state, the design process simply involves basing the designs on most critical one and then checking for under, remaining limit states that require an understanding. We have material properties and also loading. So, um, kalau you nampak kat sini ada clause. Klaus ni bukan saya yang cipta lah. This Klaus um, is based on uh, BS 8110. Uh, I tak sure lah dia ke tak BS. I ada sebenarnya. Okay but it's quite uh, tebal. Uh, a thick book. So um, kalau you nak tengok you boleh Google sendirilah dalam dalam internet pun ada share actually that BS. You can refer to that if you want to have a look on what, what, what I'm talking right now. <sighs> okay, so now we going to ay, the reinforced concrete beam design. So, baru kita masuk on beam part lah. Okay, so there are three common types of reinforced concrete beam which are we have the rectangular section with tension steel only. Okay, okay. dalam structure part Three, this is the only one that you're going to learn. Okay. This other two kita tak belajar. Tapi you kena tahulah apa benda. Okay. Bawah ni is tension steel. Why we call it tension steel? Because it actually resists tension. <coughs> because we know that uh, kan dari atas akan ada loading kan. Okay, we know that concrete above, if you still remember bila dulu-dulu you ada buat that bending reinforcement, bend, eh, sorry, bending stress and shearing stress. If you still remember dulu you ada lukis something like this and you, are, you kata ini adalah compression and this one is tension. So, this is what, kenapa kita belajar benda ni? <laughs> okay, so atas ni. Okay, atas of the beam part will will have to resist compression and below will have to resist tension. Um, 
Sebab kalau atas ni kan So bawah atas ni Pada atas ni dia akan compress Bawah ni Dia akan nak lari ke sana Macam mana nak cakap Okay So you punya beam kat bawah ni Dia akan start nak crack lah Because kenapa dia akan bending betul So dia akan bending Bawah ni pun akan start crack 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 Pecah-pecah-pecah ke atas lah Okay bawah ni yang in tension So same goes here So that's why it is very critical and crucial to put tension steel below. Kita tak letak tension steel kat tengah because tengah ni tak ada force. Tak ada story, tak ada stress. Stress kosong sih. Okay, no stress at all. No bending stress here. But the most, uh, yang penting adalah dekat bawah. Okay. Alright. <coughs> and then for the B, B1, okay B yang ni. Con rectangular section with tension and compression steel. Okay, um, bawah ni is tension lah. Okay, so this is tension steel. Atas ni, these two is for compression steel. Okay, there's additional steel you put on top. Basically, this happen when you try to make the size of the beam smaller. Okay, beam ni mungkin besar. If you have the same load, you design for uh, according to A, beam you mungkin akan lagi besar daripada beam B. Okay, because B ni mungkin you nak design the smaller size beam. Jadi, we, but we need extra support so we must put extra beam, sorry, extra bar up here for compression purpose. Alright. And C, flange section of either T or L shape with tension steel and with or without compression steel. So, ada juga jenis T-beam. Okay, ni kita panggil dia T-beam. Okay, beam ni mungkin lebih panjang lagi lah. T ni, okay. Macam tu. Handphone saya bunyi. Okay, sorry. <sighs> okay. This one also kita tak belajar. Ini engineer punya kerja. <laughs> engineer buat lah benda ni. Alright. So, I tak nak explain too much lah on this one. Okay, ini kita panggil the L-beam. This one is T-beam. Okay. The one yang we will learn only this one. Yang A sahaja. Alright. <sighs> Fahamkah anyone? Ada soalan? Line tab. Eh, ni yang salah. Habis ink miss. I think my phone is broken. Your voice more faster than the slide. <laughs> Ada eh macam tu? <laughs> Suara saya lagi laju. Hebat lah. Suara saya macam lightning speed ke? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Tak apa, it's okay. Kalau katakan your internet not very good, your phone having a problem, whatever, I recorded this video, you can refer later eh. Dalam, I put the link dalam Google Classroom. <coughs> Alright, so characteristic strength for grades of material are as follows. So we know that we're going to use the concrete and also reinforcement because nama dia reinforcement concrete. <coughs> okay. FCU, alright. Before this, I dah explain, I dah bagi tahu reinforcement strength FY. Okay, steel strength FY. This is the symbol. For concrete, FCU. Okay, ini dia. That is the concrete strength. Okay, after 28 days, dia akan buat uh, test for cube strength. Okay, kalau you masih ingat you pernah buat that cube dekat dalam lab. Cube concrete kan. That one is actually to be used for uh, testing the strength of concrete. You pernah buat cube test, that kind of thing. Okay, so the minimum grade for reinforced concrete are given in table. So, which table? This table. Okay. Uh, table 7, sorry, table 1, concrete compressive strength, okay. We have like the lowest one is 7.5. So, when people say, uh, what, what grade of concrete you use? C30. So, people will know that FCU is actually equal to 30 Newton over mm square. Okay, 30 Newton over mm square. 
So this is um, the strength that is actually nama dia sama je dengan dia punya grade. C30 means FCU 30 Newton of mm square. The strength eh. Tu maksud dia. So we have like C7.5 up to C60. <sighs> eh. Okay. Um, and tadi I dah explain about reinforcement. So here again dia tulis lagi. So sama juga FY. This is steel strength. Uh, hot roll mild steel uh, 250. And high yield steel is 460. Kena ingat eh. Then you fix. Okay here dalam simplified table version. You can refer. Faham ke? Please respond please. Any question up to until this slide? Ada soalan? <coughs> Ada soalan? Aduh. Do you guys have any question? Tak ada orang nak jawab ke? Kalau tak ada, cakap tak ada. I just not make sure you are still here. <laughs> you don't run away. Any question? No, miss. Okay, just respond. Okay, please respond. All right. So, next slide. Okay, this slide. Uh, the characteristic of service load are the actual loads that structure is designed to carry. The characteristic load used in design and define are as follows. Okay, so... What's that? Okay. Characteristic meaning to say... Building awak ni kena, kena support beberapa jenis loading lah. I believe that you dah tahu kot benda ni because I believe that you learn in part 1. Okay, structure kita ada juga explain about that load. That load. Okay, impose load. And also wind load. Oh, mungkin you belajar environmental environmental load ataupun nature load. Nama-nama gitulah. Okay. The things that you have to know that load, symbol, okay, dia adalah GK. Okay. Impose load, symbol dia is QK. Okay. And wind load, the symbol is WK. Okay, dah berapa, beberapa simbol lah kita belajar. Okay. Um, this is what we're going to use bila kita mengira. Because we're going to use formula. So, you have to insert whatever value that you got from the question. You akan masukkan dalam uh, the formula itself lah. Okay. Um, Alright. So, design load. Kita kena kira load dulu. Bila any any design yang kita buat, the most important things is to find the 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 total. Um, sorry, bukan total. How much load that will need to be supported by the um, building? Okay, berapa banyak load yang akan transfer from daripada building tu pergi ke ground. We need to know that. Okay, so the formula here, we have the characteristic load par, uh, times the partial safety factor for loads. Okay, or this is the formula. Okay, FK unit weight. I tak tahu lah ni unit weight. F ah, macam tu lah. Alright. So, FK is the type of load lah. For example, you have that load GK. Impose load QK. Win load WK. Okay. So, that is FK. Eh? And then this unit weight F ni. Or lambda ke? Ni apa? Simbol apa ni? Okay, this symbol ni. F ni. This one. This one referring to this partial safety factor. For example, okay, kita nak pilih yang mana? We have to look at the combination of load. Usually, yang bila saya ajar, saya akan ambil for that load 1.4. Okay, so that is the factor of safety. Eh? 
uh, impose load 1.6 I will use the first one okay because it depends daripada which type yang which bukan which type which uh, situation not situation circumstances we are in eh so that and win okay combination of that and win sahaja that and impose and win okay you have to know kat mana sebenarnya you nak design okay normally for building yang mungkin one story or two story we don't really care about wind load because wind load ni normally for high rise building or maybe uh, the location of building mungkin sebelah uh, sungai eh, sorry sebelah laut okay maybe nearby sea area so you need to consider wind load however if the construction mungkin bangunan itu memang dekat area town yang macam tak ada build tak ada tak ada angin and also um how to say and also <laughs> and also it's just a four story building that you don't need to consider about wind at all okay that's why we chose the first one okay in our uh, syllabus kita belajar in the first saja because of we just uh, take into account that and impose load okay because kita tak belajar design untuk bangunan yang tinggi-tinggi yang ada wind load and such eh. we just learn about um, low rise structure eh low rise building okay so the first uh, gk maksudnya that load 1.4 this is the safety factor and 1.6 for impose load. Okay. We, kita terus ambil adverse lah. Okay. Kadang yang paling adverse lah. Paling, paling tinggi eh. <coughs> okay. This is what I'm talking about eh. Inilah datangnya daripada partial safety factor yang kat belakang ni. So this is the result of the um, table belakang. Ultimate design load referring to W ni eh. So W is ultimate design load equal to 1.4 GK plus 1.6 QK. Okay. So ada sesiapa yang rasa tak faham? Any question? Semua okay? Uh, semua okay eh? I, I laju je kalau you tak cakap you ada masalah I fuh, pergi je so I just assume that everyone is okay hopefully right okay after kita dah calculate the ultimate design load maksudnya loading yang daripada above dia akan turun ke bawah kita dah calculate ultimate design load the next thing we need to calculate is the moment okay so it is called ultimate design moment okay formula is m equal to wl square over 8 so i am not sure if you still remember masa part tu mungkin i pernah pakai formula ni okay this is the formula where hmm kalau you masih ingat lah okay this is a uh, formula bila you have loading yang uniform and only UDL saja uniformly distributed load the uniform throughout the beam length okay so you boleh terus pakai this one ini adalah SFD okay ini adalah BMD okay BMD okay value kat bawah ni which is we call it as maximum bending moment is actually the ultimate design moment okay kenapa kita kata dia uniform okay loading dari for example sebab sekarang dah masuk pasal beam loading for beam is actually uniform macam mana dia boleh transfer because katakan kat sini akan ada slab contohnya lah alamak kenapa aku lukiatan ni juga this is example saja. Ya, yeah, look ini. Okay, contohnya you have beam here. Okay, beam you macam ni lah contohnya. Okay, from here you akan ada slab. Okay, slab. So slab ni, 
akan transfer load to beam uniformly sama. Okey. Sebab tak kisahlah ada bangun ada perabot ke ada orang ke apa ke. Transfer of load dia akan sama throughout the length of the beam. So that's why we kita kata dia as UDL. Okey. Kolom lain lah. Kolom duduk kat tepi ni. Tak ada kena-mengena dengan you punya beam. Okay. Because you punya beam ni akan transfer pada kolom kat bawah. Okay. Transfer lah pergi kolom ni. Tapi ini dah lain dah. Because kita sekarang beam. The the things that we need to care adalah slab. Sebab load untuk beam datang dari slab. So dia adalah uniformly distributed load. Okay. Yang sama throughout the length. Okay. So that's why the formula is M equal to WL square over 8. Alright, I penat. Okay, the next formula that you have to know, bila you dah dapatkan ultimate design moment, you must make sure, okay, you must make sure, um, ya ampun, cuba tukar sendiri. WL square over 8. Okay. <coughs> you must, you kena dapatkan design ultimate moment resistance. Which is MU. Okay. What MU, apa MU ni eh? Okay. M ni, moment datang dari loading. Okay. This is the loading and this is the moment that will be produced by the load. Okay. Loading akan menyebabkan moment. You have to know that. Okay. But then, MU is um, sebanyak mana beam you boleh support moment. Okay. For example, you have this kind of, you can 600mm times 300mm beam. Okay. This beam boleh support as much as 11, no, 28, kononnya lah ni, I pun tak tahu, I buat cerita I sendiri je. 28.8 kilonewton meter. Okay. Contohnya, beam you boleh support this much. Okay. Tapi, what yang being produced by moment daripada loading tu, because you, you akan kira, you akan dapat benda ni based on B and D and also strength of concrete. Tak ada kena-mengena dengan loading eh. Ini yang moment daripada loading. Ini moment daripada beam you. Beam you boleh support banyak mana. Okay. So for example, you pun dapatlah 14 kN. Okay. Ni moment yang produce by loading. So bila you dapat M less than MU means that it is singly reinforcement Singly reinforced concrete beam. Kita panggil dia singly. Singly reinforced. Singly reinforced concrete beam. Okay. What does it mean by singly? Maksudnya macam, okay. You masih ingat tadi ada cakap pasal this one. Uh, yang ini. Okay. So singly ni yang ni. Yang ada satu yang ni. Yang A. Okay. A ni, this is singly type. Dia just ada tension steel sahaja. Alright. So, tension steel is still below here lah. Okay. So, this is singly. Okay. When M is less than MU, meaning that um, beam can resist moment from loading. So, this is the type that you will design. Okay. However, if ever you dapat M is bigger than MU, then the option for you to design going to be type 2. Okay. Which is, you akan ada another bar above here for compression. Okay. So, you akan ada compression and tension bar. So, this is what we call as doubly reinforced concrete beam. Okay. So, bila kita design, we must make sure that kalau tak ada 
keperluan untuk design something yang smaller maksudnya to design smaller beam size you can choose to design it as singly ok tak payah tambah reinforcement bar ok because reinforcement bar lebih mahal daripada you design big concrete um, beam ok uh, size yang lebih besar sikit bukanlah besar banyak sangat pun besar sikit je lebih baik you choose that one daripada you design doubly reinforced concrete beam because lebih complicated and you kena ada additional bar inside. Okay, <coughs> from this formula, okay, MU equal to 0.156 on my formula and we have FCU. So, FCU kalau you masih ingat this, it is strength of concrete yang macam tadi yang 30, 35 yang the smallest one is 7.5 okay so that is the strength of concrete so b is actually breath okay and d is effective depth so effective depth ni bukan height eh effective depth ni benda lain tapi nanti i explain what is effective depth here i tak explain dulu so benda ni semua based on the size of the beam kalau beam u besar mu u akan jadi besar kalau beam u kecil mu u akan jadi kecil macam tu lah dia depends pada size beam yang you dah design yang M de depends pada loading yang beam you kena support tu dia beza dia next ok dah lari pula I tak betul kan alright here we have K equal to M divide by FCU BD square must be less or equal to K prime So, kalau dekat sini, you tengok K prime is equal to 0.156. I tunjuk, benda ni sama je. Okay, so K equal to M over FCU P D square. If, if you move it here, because I sebenarnya nak bagi tahu you, sama je. K FCU P D square. So, Tengok kan, eh, belakang formula MU equal to 0.156 FCU BD square. Aku tulis balik kat sini. This is repetition saja. Okay. If you see, kalau K ni adalah sama dengan K prime. Okay. M ni sebenarnya adalah MU. Okay, kalau K adalah 0.156. M ni is actually MU. Okay, maksudnya it is a moment, maximum moment that the beam can support using that size of beam. Okay. However, this one yang you kira kat sini for K, you are using M daripada loading. So, K you takkan sama dengan K prime. Okay. Because M kalau you pakai sama dengan M you, you kira earlier, you akan dapat K ni adalah K prime lah. K paling maximum. Okay, which is 0.156. 0.156 ni sebenarnya kita kena make sure dia less than um, 0.156. Sebab 0.156 ni sebenarnya maximum value. Okay. Macam dekat sini. 0.156 ni sebenarnya dah maksimum because it, this is the, using this size inilah paling maksimum beam akan boleh support kalau you nak design the as singly reinforced concrete beam okay if you want to design it for doubly is a different story lah tapi in our syllabus kita mesti make sure k to less than k prime ataupun m less than mu hmm pelik pening boleh okay So M, M this one, um, this is come from the, uh, the load. Okay, so FCU is the strength of concrete. Tak kisahlah 30 ke 35 ke. Okay, depends on the design itself. And B, the breadth and D adalah effective depth yang akan saya akan explain earlier. Okay, okay why? What is K? So K ni tak ada nama. Okay, I pun tak ada letak nama. K ni is actually a coefficient that um, dalam BS pakai. Okay. Um, so K ni um, memang tak ada nama lah. <laughs> okay. 
Kenapa kita kena kira K for the sake of kita nak kira Z okay, or Z. So Z is equal to D in a bracket 0 0.5 plus square root 0 0.25 minus K over 0 0.9. Okay. Must be less than 0 0.95 D. Okay. There's always a reason why kena less than 0 0.95 D and so on. Later I will explain. Bila kita buat calculation. Bila kita tak buat calculation, susah nak explain. Okay, what is Z? So, Z ni sebenarnya level arm. Level arm is a perpendicular distance between the line of action of the couple forming from compressive and tensor force in a section. So, you know that in the beam itself, you have like the top side is compression. And the uh, below bottom side is tension. So, there's a... A, a boundary where it will meet together eh. kita tak tahu dekat mana ok so inilah kenapa kita kira Z so Z ni is actually to measure the distance between line of action untuk compressive and tensile force ok <sighs> alright ni why dia nak bagi tahu why K is K prime 0.156 kenapa kita tak boleh pakai lebih daripada 0.156 lah itu adalah limit dia lah ok um, limit for singly reinforced concrete beam ok kalau you nak design the SW you can also pakai je K lebih daripada 0.156 but that one are not included in the syllabus alright ok so this one uh, is actually um, if you still remember, so ini adalah diagram. Masih ingat lagi diagram yang kita belajar masa part 2. Okay. So this is another one is simplified stress diagram at failure. For example at ULS. So if ever it reach ULS. Maksudnya ultimate limit state dah reach. It exceed the ultimate limit state. This is what will happen. So above here. You nampak kat sini. So kat sini cannot resist any any kind of um, tension at all. Because normally we know that above is compression. Okay. And below is tension. So bawah ni kalau katakan your beam masa dalam keadaan fail. Here dia memang langsung tak dapat. This part memang langsung tak dapat fail to resist any tension or any compression at that area. Masa dia, nak, masa dia fail lah. Okay. Okay. Another formula that you have to know. Okay. This is the final formula. I rasa for today. <laughs> okay. For today. Which is daripada Z tadi. Kenapa kita kira level arm? Because we need to calculate this AS. Or we also call it steel area. So, uh, as the formula again is M, so moment is ultimate design moment and divide by 0 0.995 FY, FY ni adalah uh, characteristic strength of reinforcement whether we use mild steel ataupun high yield steel yang mungkin cost 460 Newton over mm square for the strength or 250 for mild steel. So, Zach can be any value yang you dapat daripada you, your calculation of level arm here. Okay, so you akan dapat value of Z. <coughs> Penatnya saya. You akan dapat value of Z. Alright, so uh, I explain sikit but kat sini too large an area of reinforcement should also be avoided since it will hinder proper placing and adequate compaction of concrete around the reinforcement. So another thing that it reminds you for example Excuse me. I'm not my guitar. Okay. <clears throat> For example, you are the beam here. The ugly beam. Right. <coughs> oh, yo. Okay, you have bar. If you put bar too big, okay, macam mana you nak cast you punya <coughs> beam? Because you need to pour concrete inside. Tepi ni akan ada um, 
formwork depan formwork belakang tepi ni pun formwork eh so uh, <coughs> excuse me <coughs> hmm. concrete will be pop from above okay kalau katakan um, <coughs> reinforcement by macam ni lah macam mana um, concrete tu nak pass through um, void yang kat sini kalau terlampau dekat <coughs> terlampau rapat so kena ada gap lah between uh, reinforcement bar so baru boleh concrete boleh pour and boleh kat, <coughs> come out kat bawah ni eh. if not dekat bawah ni takkan kena concrete ok so that's the thing Alright. <coughs> um, <coughs> so here we have like Bila you dah kira benda ni You dah dapat the value of AS So what you need to do is So AS Ni I bagi contoh je eh You dapat AS seribu Seribu Dua ratus Tujuh puluh mm square Ni contoh eh So which bar you nak pakai? So you bila you dapat you dah kira value AS dekat belakang ni, you dah ada value of S. You are can refer to be uh, this this table untuk tahu berapa banyak bar you nak pakai, berapa size dia. Okay, For example, 1 2 7 0 ni minimum. You kena cari value yang higher higher than this value tapi not too high because tak nanti dia akan jadi over design. Membazirlah. Right, so mungkin you boleh ambil tiga, tiga, tiga numbers of bar with 25 mm diameter. Okay, that is one option. Or mungkin you boleh ambil this one, not too bad. Or mungkin you boleh ambil this one, up to you. So how are you going to write this thing? So for example, um, I tengok pukul berapa sekarang. Oi, tiga-tiga minit dah. Okay. Kalau kata kan. Okay, here. Kalau you tengok kat sini. Bar types are specified by letters. So, R, mild steel bar. And Y is high yield steel. High yield bars lah. Okay. If, kalau you masih ingat yang ni FY dia 460. Yang ni FY dia 250. Okay, for example, you pakai high yield bar. Okay. Kita akan letak 3Y25. So 3 ni refer, referring to the number of bar. Y ni referring to high tensile. And 25 is, is referring to the bar size. 25 ni bar size ni sebenarnya dia punya diameter. Okay. Ini sebenarnya 25 mm diameter. Okay. So ini datang dia. Okay, so kalau you pakai 3Y25, orang pun tahu. 3 numbers of bar, high tensile steel and 25mm diameter, the size. So this is how kita tulis lah, kita label. <coughs> Contohnya macam ni lah. Okay. Alright. So ini I tak nak cerita lagi. Ini next class sebab sekarang pun dah 3-3 minit. Okay, dah time up. <laughs> Adoi Wow macam miss dalam hati saya Kekas tak 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 Ya Allah nak mampus aku dengar 